Do you want to be in my video? Huh? Say, say hello, Frank. Hello, Frankie Boo. Oh, okay. You don't want to be in my video. You're fine. Okay, he's camera shy, apparently. Greetings, one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Yes, believe it or not, uh, as you can tell from the title of this video, yes, I had just this morning my very first thrift store shopping experience with CDs and records. Well, I actually didn't buy any records, spoiler alert, this is all CDs. But uh, yeah, as hard as it is to believe, as much of a CD fiend and record, well, I, I would say record hound, but I'm not quite a record hound yet. I'm a, definitely a record enthusiast, let's put it that way. As much of a record and CD buyer as I am, I have never tried shopping at thrift stores for CDs or records. Uh, not for any particular, well, actually for a couple of particular reasons. Uh, not for the reason that you might think that I think thrift stores are beneath me. I don't. Uh, it's For one thing, I don't shop at thrift stores because I don't need to. What I mean by that is I'm in a fortunate enough financial situation. I'm not rich by any means, but I'm in a, enough of a situation, a comfortable situation, that I can afford to pay retail for clothing and other essentials like that. So I figure leave the bargain hunting to the people who need to bar bargain hunt. Why should I snatch up the inventory if they can have it for uh, uh, for for what they can they need to if they need to watch every dollar? Uh, but yeah, for some reason I've just never checked out their CDs or records. Partly because um, in the subscription feed of my YouTube channel, whenever I see somebody, well, not all the time, but most of the time when I tend to see somebody's uh, video about thrift store shopping, they seem to have a mediocre to negative experience usually. Uh, so, and I've always just assumed, and it turns out wrongly, spoiler alert, that the CDs and records that were in thrift stores were just a bunch of garbage. And in some locations that might be true, but uh, what kind of made me reconsider, uh, well, two things actually. Uh, my brother has gotten into woodworking in the last uh, several months, and he's recently gone to thrift stores and found in their book section, which is pretty impressively sized, uh, the, the one store, the thrift store that I went to today, uh, has a great book section, and he finds great woodworking books for two bucks a piece. So I thought, hmm. Maybe I'm missing something not going to thrift stores. And also, uh, while I, we, we were out uh, this morning shopping, uh, doing picking up last-minute travel essentials and stuff, and Mom wanted to go to a thrift store, so we decided to go ahead, go ahead and stop. We had plenty of time. We were making good time on the errands we needed to run. So we went, decided to stop there. Mom went and looked at the stuff that she wanted to look at, and I decided to look through the CDs and records, and didn't find much in the record department. I was not really in the record mode in my head. But I'll be darned if I didn't find some pretty decent stuff in the CD section. So that's what this video is about. I'm going to show you guys what I found in the CDs. And I actually found seven CDs and one cassette to show you. And also a couple of other add-ons here. Uh, I've got a CD uh, somewhere else that we went shopping this morning, so I, I might as well show that to you since, uh, since it was a pickup today. As well as something that came in the mail, uh, in today's mail. It wasn't supposed to be here for a couple of days. I don't think I was expecting it until I was already gone on vacation, but it's here early. Yay! So uh, the one and only cassette that I picked up, uh, as I think I mentioned I picked up seven CDs and one cassette at uh, St. Vincent de Paul is the thrift store that I went to, if you were wondering. Uh, it is a an Australian rock band called Baby Animals. This is their self-titled debut album. And as you can kind of tell by their, their image on the front cover, uh, as their sound also goes along with it, kind of reminiscent of Joan Jett and the Blackhearts. So just kind of that, that nice, nice, straightforward rock and roll band fronted by a woman. A great vocalist as, uh, as well. And uh, you, maybe a little bit of Melissa Etheridge in there too. Just that, that same general style. Great band. And I actually do already have their self-titled debut as well as their sophomore album, Shaved and Dangerous, on CD. But hey, I figured, you know, for I think it was 49 cents their cassettes were going for. For that price, why not? You know, so just yeah, add it to my cassette collection. What the heck, right? And then uh, this first CD that I'm going to show you, I think I might have already picked up for my friend. I I'm taking it to my friend that I'm going to see, and I have a feeling I might have already sent him this CD. Uh, we'll find out by the time we see this video. I will be there. And so, yes, it is for us. He is a um, Middle Eastern, from a Middle Eastern uh, uh, heritage. Uh, I think he was born and raised in America. But yes, uh, his one and only album so far, I think, uh, Aliens and Rainbows. Great, great album of uh, 80s inflected dance pop, 
and stuff. Uh, you might have heard his song Hollywood's Not America, which is pretty much unlike any other track on the album. So don't assume that, you know, if you've heard that song, don't be afraid to check out the rest of the album. It's just got a lot of different uh, shades and a lot of different uh, great lyrics, uh, great different melodies and stuff in, you know, just a great dance pop album, gotta say. Uh, apparently I think it's great because I've been using that word like 54 times. And then uh, the CDs that I picked up for myself, first we have Bette Midler with uh, her album Bet of Roses. Now I have been kind of working my way backward through uh, picking up Bette Midler's discography as I find the CDs, and this is the most recent release of hers that I did not have until today. This was 1995, I think. So yeah, my sister had two or three Bette Midler CDs in her collection, so that's kind of what got me started on picking her stuff up. Uh, Arif Mardin is the guy who produced this one. Uh, he produced some of her big, big hits in the late 80s and early 90s. So yeah, pick that one up. And then Karen Carpenter, her solo album, which uh, actually she recorded it back in the early 80s, but it actually wasn't released until 1993 or 19, oh, 1996, I think it says here. So yeah, it was just kind of, you know, kept in the vaults until then. Uh, I, I love the Carpenters. Uh, well, I love them as much as a person can love them who only has a two-disc compilation CD of theirs instead of all their individual albums. But yeah, I, I just, I love their sound. Cheesy, maybe. A little, little snoozy, a little schlocky, but hey, I love them. And Karen Carpenter has one of the best voices ever in the history of pop music. Trust me, bar none, flat out. So yes, I'm very interested to hear this one, pick it up. And then uh, my experience with Bargain Bag a couple of months ago, I think it was, with the Celine Dion CD I got in that Bargain Bag, prompted me to pick up a couple of her albums, uh, New Day Has Come, as well as One Heart. Uh, they had, Celine Dion appears to be, uh, judging from this thrift store, she appears to be a thrift store staple. They had like five or six of her albums, and I decided to just to, to pace myself and limit myself to two so far. I, I think I'll have fun listening to those. Uh, the single A New Day Has Come, I really enjoyed when I heard it on the radio back then, so why not? And then this one is a, uh, a local band, On the Rocks. It was an acapella band, uh, acapella group, from the University of Oregon. And they put out six or seven uh, albums, CDs, over the years. I don't know if they're actively recording still, but I have two of them so far, and this is so this will be the third one in my collection. Very good stuff. They usually do uh, adaptations of popular songs, you know, arranged for acapella, obviously. And uh, so, yeah, very happy to find that one, and I'm continually on the hunt for their CDs. This one, incidentally, was still sealed. And another one that was actually still sealed that I thought about picking up but didn't was the Jonas Brothers, Happiness Begins. I'm, I wasn't interested in the album personally. I mean, I thought that their single off of that, what was it called, Sugar? I can't remember. I thought it was okay, uh, but just wasn't, wouldn't have been interested. I might have flipped it maybe, but uh, leave that for somebody else who might want it uh, more than I would. And the last thrift store CD that I picked up is a jazz title called Boof by a guy named Tony Remy. Never heard of him before, but he's on a label that I was quite fond of from the uh, 90s. The, the late 80s, early 90s was their heyday. GRP Records, great jazz label. Uh, so I decided to pick it up and give it a try. Well, it has a cover of uh, uh, Mercy, Mercy Me, The Ecology, um, Marvin Gaye song. Took me a second. <laughs> so yes, those are the thrift store CDs that I picked up. And uh, we also stopped at Walmart in our errands to this morning, and uh, I had heard that this album was out. I was not particularly interested in picking it up, even though the uh, original album is one of the best albums of the 90s period. Amy Grant, Heart in Motion, this is the 30th anniversary two-disc release of that album. Disc 2 is packed with non-album tracks, demos, remixes, and you name it. Uh, so yeah, I decided, you know, what the heck, it's only 14 bucks at Walmart, so why not pick it up? And uh, you know, that way the uh, this single disc CD I have can go into the uh, trade-ins at the store or whatever. So anyway, so that's that stuff. And now on to the stuff, that, the thing that I got in the mail. Uh, this actually, as I think I said in the beginning of the video, I wasn't supposed to get this until later. I actually thought it was from a Canadian eBay seller because it's a Canadian title, but it actually was shipped from uh, New York. So, yeah. It got here in a pretty quick order, less than a week, I think. Hang on here. And we have, it is sealed in cardboard, so one moment, please. Just need to free one end of it so I can extricate it from its packaging. Correction, I need to 
cut more than one end of it. So I will blather on pointlessly while I do this so that you guys don't get too bored. Yes, in perfect condition, just like I said. Bare Naked Ladies, uh, of the uh, two both albums, Are Me and Are Men, uh, they released two albums back to back, like a year apart or less than a year apart, back in the early 2000s, 2006, I think it says. And this is a deluxe package that collects both of those albums. Been kind of wanting it. I did have them individually a long time ago, but foolishly, several months ago, a couple of years ago, I got rid of the middle part of my Bare Naked Ladies discography just because those are the albums that I was the least happy with. Uh, I've come to enjoy some of their more recent stuff more. So yeah, the, the middle part of their discography was kind of a lull, in my opinion. But I decided, what the heck, get it one more time, try it again. And uh, yes, I, the completest in me, I, I keep wrestling between just keeping the albums that I like for space considerations and the completest in me that needs to have every single studio album. Apparently that part is winning out right now. But anyway, so yes, that is my finds and uh, pickups for the day. I hope you enjoyed it. And yes, this my, uh, this first thrift store experience is definitely making me wonder what else is hiding at the other thrift stores that are in the area. So this may be a regular routine of mine uh, if I can get the time to do so. So anyway, that'll do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are always checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos. And be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.